You are welcome back. Let us now try to understand what this term also means, variable. A variable is a characteristic of an item or one particular unit or individual within the sample or population that is being studied. So in embarking on a study, you may, you will, in, if you are using a sample, you will consider a number of people that will make, that will make up your sample. I have been focused more on individuals and people. However, a study can revolve around people. It can revolve around items. You may want to study about some animals. You may want to study about nations in, in the sense of its countries. You may want to study about trees. So it's not always a study about human beings, but you may hear me saying more of individuals and people, and more especially you as medical lab people, you work with human beings. You try to understand your, your, your patients, your clients who visit your labs, but you will also sometimes need to do study about some of the gadgets you use, like the syringes you use and all of that. In that case, the, a syringe is not it's an object, but you may want to conduct a study concerning the syringes you use or some medications you use. So the sample, the units of the sample of population is not, not, is not always about people, human beings. It can, be, it can be objects, it can be animals and so on. So if you take, for example, if we are considering individuals within our sample, if individuals make up our sample and we are considering them, if I have 100 people making up my sample, okay? If I'm making a study, I'm doing a study about Ghanaians and the sample I'm using is better 100,000 Ghanaians. For every single Ghanaian I take information from, if I ask for the person's age, age is a variable because it is a characteristic that is de describing one individual within my sample. If I ask for the person's salary, okay, salary, how much the person earns, so in that case, salary is also a different variable because it's a characteristic that is describing an individual within the sample or the population of study. So a variable can take on very varied values because if I take an individual, his age can be anything. His age can be between zero and 120. If I take an individual, if, if I'm looking at children, if, and I pick an individual, that person, until I ask for that person, and the person gives me a response, that person age could be between one and 10 because it's a child. So variables can assume varied values. We cannot know unless we have asked the question or we have done, conducted the research and we have gotten the results. Now let us look at the types of variables. There are a number of types of variables we may want to consider. So in studying variables, we categorize them first of all into two. We have the categorical variables and then we have the numerical variables. And under categorical variables, we have nominal and ordinal. And under numerical variables here, first of all, we have discrete and continuous. And then under continuous, we have interval and ratio. So please follow the flowcharts very well. First of all, these are variable types. And then there are two major types, which are the categorical. Another way for categorical is qualitative, qualitative. And then we also have the numerical variables. Another word for it is quantitative, quantitative. And under categorical variables, which is the qualitative variables, we have nominal and ordinal variables. And then under numerical variables, we have discrete and continuous variables. Then under, this, under continuous variables, we also have interval and ratio variables. So this is a good picture for you to appreciate the various types of variables that they are.
we want to look a bit into categorical or the first two types, categorical and numerical variables. Now, I mentioned that another way for categorical variables is qualitative variables. These are variables that do not assume numbers. They don't assume any numerical value, all right? So for example, the color of your dress, the color of your eye, the weights, no, the weights are numerical. Please forgive me, please forgive me. So we can have the color of your dress. You can have the gender, okay? Male, female, it's not, there are no numbers, all right? And then we can also have whatever subject you may be studying in school. So if you are studying MLT, you are studying medical lab, someone is studying statistics, another is studying engineering and so forth. So all these are qualitative variables. We, they don't have numbers assigned to them. Now, I mentioned weights here, but I was wrong. So if you look at quantitative, if you come to the other group, which is quantitative variables or numerical variables, these are the variables that assume numerals. They assume numbers, okay? So for example, weights, if you go, you stand on your, the weighing scale and you, you weigh 60 kg, a, new, a number has been assigned to that variable. So it's a numerical variable or a quantitative variable. If you look at age, if you consider people's ages, someone may be 50 years old, someone may be 30 years old, a number has been assigned to that variable. So we also describe such variables as numerical variables. So if you read this slide, you will come to know, you appreciate it more and find more examples of it. Now let's look at the two types of numerical variables. We have the discrete and the continuous numerical variables. So under discrete um, numerical variables, you there are variables that you can assign specific values to, specific values to, okay? So for example, age. We don't normally say I am 25.5 years old. Usually we'll say I'm 25 years old or I am 30 years old. So age can qualify as a discrete variable. Now you may also want to consider another kind of discrete variable is the number of children in the family. So if you take any particular family, you may have in family A, there are five children. In family B, there are two children. So the number of children in a family is assuming a specific value. It's assuming a specific value. So these are types of discrete variables. Age, number of children in a family, number of staff in a company, number of students in a class, all these are discrete variables. How about continuous variables? Continuous variables are variables that can take values between two specific values. So for example, weight. You can weigh 50 kg. Someone can weigh 50.3 kg. So you realize that this person B who weighs 50.3 is assuming a weight that is between 50 kg and 51 kg. So continuous variables can take values that are decimals. It can be a form of a fraction because they don't take only integers. They can take values that fall between specific values. So if it's height, you may be 5.2 feet or 5.6 feet or 6.1 feet and so on. Okay. The last, the last, lane of this flow chart where we have the nominal ordinal interval and then the ratio variables will be looked at in more detail. They are usually called scales of measurement. Okay. They describe how variables are categorized or counted or measured. So in the next session, we'll have a look at these types of or these measures of variables.